Prepare for battle. Thirty seconds to battle. The battle begins. Bounty, which my matriarch will prize. Radiant's top tower I is under attack. My match. Death and gold are linked.
joining the commentary as well. We've, we've got Raven farming up on the top lane. The phase boots is going to allow him to make it so that even if Axe comes to the lane, he's not going to be very comfortable. And in the meantime, that uh, he can progress towards something like uh, the Morbid Mask, and that would allow him to not only jungle, but have the threat of Roshan always available to him. So I think that he's going to be in a pretty good position to start making things happen pretty early on the map. But at least for right now, the kills have kind of stopped rolling in, and we are just going to be seeing a bit of a passive uh, laning experience. AU's going to sneak around, and he will see Kangaroo going for it. Mm, too high HP to go for the kill. Axe should be careful if he's, uh... Oh, that's a kill right here on the Bane. I mean, there is going to be an Axe coming in as well. That nice little Nightmare, and maybe even a Taunt coming in, but... Okay, they do taunt the Ursa, now he's running to the right side. He will pop his ultimate to keep himself somewhat alive, as well as pop off that Mana Leak. And that's actually a big one here, as he is, is able to walk away. Yeah, pretty good stuff. So, I mean, it's just kind of a, a null and void exchange, though. A lot of rotations coming out for WG just to, to keep the Bane up and kicking, but he does have the potential here with the, the early levels to obviously get some good burst damage in and maybe find uh, the setup for a dunk, for example. I mean, you look at dunk, it's got 250 kill threshold, and then of course you get the brain sap right before that for 160. That's going to enable you to get a kill on a hero like Demon. Oh, well, Nightmare to set things up, waiting for Kangaroo to walk in range. Should be a very easy kill, easy dunk. Well, unfortunately, now that he's somewhat trapped here between three heroes, Ursa being one of the spins, doing quite a bit of damage, but uh, Spikes getting him down as well. One for one trade, but drawing a couple of TPs. Honestly, not too bad for the Axe. Yeah, in the end, he still is able to buy his Tranquil Boots before he goes down, so not in the worst position. But uh, looking at Ajit, this Templar Assassin, we expect it to maybe do pretty well against Magnus, since it is like a short range hero in the melee strength and of course the shockwave is really weak against her fraction but as we see it right now uh able to beat out the magnus by 20 is just really beyond expectation like mushi we expected him to maybe struggle in terms of early cs but this is just so dominant i just level seven and mushi's not even six i mean a big part of having a magnus mid is your ability to harass him while csing but the Refraction also is very good at defensive, uh, defensively for that. And not only that, let's not forget about the Ancient Stack that Mookie suicide to earlier. Like, they, they need to be aware of that uh, when, when the Templar Assassin is going to take it, and they need to make a play around it, because you don't let that TA get it for free. There are massive stacks on the Radiant side right now. For both the Hard Camp by that Secret Shop, which is out of triple, and of course the Ancient, which is also really big. So in this position, it's, it's got to be Fnatic that try to make the first move in that direction and and right now it just seems like wg have all the tools uh to keep it safe okay all right meanwhile we have nana also farming up some stacks in the jungle and this is why why i think that warrior gaming unity is one of these teams that could actually take fanatic in, in a fair fight they are just super efficient on the map they have very good playmakers and at least for now they are definitely holding their own yeah, I mean, Ohio's been doing some really cool things on the bottom lane. He even has tried to make some rotations here. has the dust, he's ready to, to make something happen, but we just haven't really seen much connecting from Fnatic. Like, they always need to get that first spell out, and did they have Blink Daggers, it's going to be mostly if WG misstep, or if they just really don't see something coming. Yep. But, to be fair, this is not really their time to shine at the moment, you know. You look at a Magnus lineup, there's some time for him to grow, get that blink. Same thing for the Ursa. And of course, that's, you know, AU as well. He hasn't got their six. So, I think Fnatic is about to get the, their tools real soon. Especially if they could get the skank around. Smoke is over as it's broken on the right side, but they might get a call kill for return. Ex Nova, trying to run away, but easy glimpse back. And the Wrath is going to secure the kill. Yeah, and that was actually a pretty slow reaction coming from Nova, as the, they had put an Observer Ward on the high ground underneath an Observer Sentry, and should have realized there was smoke there, but too little too late, the Coddle had stepped too far forward and ends up going down, but they at least will be able to pick up that Observer after uh, he comes back up. Yep. And uh, I was wrong about the tower, by a pretty long shot, on a minute. In 10 seconds early, Raven's able to take that top tier one. It's definitely possible, but usually you'll see like a, a level 5, level 7 Nature's Prophet rotating in to try to make that happen, and it just didn't seem necessary. Ohio's mostly been on the bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, that goes back to the, the Axe being in the jungle, and Afu being the placeholder. Ursa gets a lot of you know free pot shots. And I think it's more so Fnatic actively looking to push the tower, and they did, so... Mm -hmm. Nicely done. But Ajit, uh, I mentioned this ancient stack, it's unaccounted for. He is now ramping himself up amazingly. Do you go for the blink here, or do you go straight for the Death Soul? 
Well, he has his power treads, and I feel like the Dezo would kind of allow him to really make the most of that, where you're attacking fast, you're putting out a lot of damage, and you're able to burst targets down. Um, obviously, both items are have their value, but in this position, I think it's much less about getting into place to, to get the hits in, and much more about just putting in as much damage as possible. So you've got the axe to, uh, Blink Axe to set you up, Kangaroo is going to initiate the fights, and I think it's mostly about just killing a target within the duration of Fiend's Grip, or in the duration of a call. No. There are some very nice squishy targets that you could blow up with the Blink, Disruptor being one of them, uh, the Nature's Prophet being another. But, you know, I guess it comes down to his preference as well. Raven? Gonna go straight for Roche. I do believe Radiant is fully aware of that. Lumen is gonna ch be channeled into the pit. Of course, they could throw traps to see where Roche is at. And mm -hmm. That's why the Central Wards are actually, it's just to keep an eye on that. There, yep. There's no way that they walk in Invis. Now, Mushi is in this and he's swinging around and so is AU. I do believe they see AU though. They're pinging him out. No more Sentuar available on X Nova. A lot of information being granted. Smoke popped and broken immediately by two separate players and now they're gonna go straight into the pit. Enrage has been used. Blink call. They're gonna actually get the call but who's actually gonna take down Roshan? Illumin's gonna follow through. They're actually gonna get him dead. A just hits the ground. It looks like Juggernaut's gonna be the one to pick it up. Meal on the right side here. Demon dropping very low. Ah, uh, just gonna kill him. Blinding Light actually saving the Magnus. But I think that is still a big enough victory here for Warriors Gaming. Two kills, Ursa being one of them, and they get the Roche. I don't know who got the last hit though. It was the Radiant, either Axe or Juggernaut were able, was able to take the last hit on Roshan, as well as the Aegis Immortal, as well as those two kills. And that time it couldn't have been more perfect. One more Fury Swipe with that Enrage, and that is going to be a kill on Roche. But a little bit of Bash Luck favoring WG as they are able to just jump in and make some big things happen. Now they've got level 6 on everybody. So oh, mid lane, yeah, they, they got a kill as well. Axe getting that dunk. Man, that blink timing, so, it's so... extremely good. Yeah, pristine and on time. And I think given the nature of what just happened in the past, you know, one minute, if you're out here, I think you go Deso. Now you're, you're so far ahead that you could be sieging towers, and having that extra damage as well as uh, minus armor is just key. Yeah, I mean, he's got like 3k banked up, so he definitely is going to be able to pick that up in a very short time frame. And in the meantime, you're you're still beating on the tier 2, in fact. That Blightstone getting a little bit of extra damage in here, and you're just really not afraid. I mean, Fnatic, they, they are not very good at surprising you. Right now, their movements are very pronounced, and any threats you'll see coming a mile away. Yep. Well, until they get the Blink on Mushi, which he's, you know, the last 200 is always the... Toughest one, Nana will walk away and Impale will hit on him as well. No spin here by Nana. He does have Aegis. I guess he's unafraid. Now they push in the Bane as well. Blink Calder's gonna get two. Can they actually make the return play? They're gonna focus. Ooh, actually push away, but the <laughs> Luminate is gonna get him. Meanwhile, the big bear man will walk away. So one for one trade and a buyback from Bane. That's pretty hardcore. Yeah, I really just want to get back involved in that one. I mean, he got the Fiend's Grip out for only a second, maybe got a little frustrated by that. But uh, in the end, they're not able to really make the most of the Aegis, and they do take the Tier 2, uh, as well as kill off the Nyx Assassin. So, I mean, and the buyback doesn't really come of anything, but it also doesn't cost them too much in the, the long term. The, the Axe is going to be able to transition from not only the Blink to being extra tanky on top of it, and the TA, as we talked about, is going to have that Desolator at a really good time. Yeah. And, you know, the Warrior Gaming has non-stop stacking throughout all of this. Every time I see a jet, he's either in lane killing heroes, killing creeps, or he's in the ancient stack. You know, just killing more, more, more ancients. So, yeah. this net worth, he is about 2.5k ahead of the next highest uh, for Fnatic. So, I say the game is looking pretty good. Yeah. Now, I'm noticing that Kangaroo is actually going to be going for the Blade Mail at just immediately after the Link Dagger without any HP items. And the, the reason I see this is mostly against this Ursa. Yep. If the Ursa is close to Max Furious Wipes, is not going for a Max Earthshock build, you can just uh, kill him on his own sword. If you're able to get a really good call out and he happens to have Overpower already active, this can just completely shut him down. I mean, I Raven... Mean, you won't be at a great ship afterwards, but yeah, you, you do take down the Ursa. Yeah, it's at it's a cost, for yep. sure, but all the same, I think it, it definitely can be worth it. Because right now, Raven is in a really bad spot. He's only 1-1-1 one, one, one in kills, and he's got what, Poor Man's Shield, Phase Boots, Morbid Mask, and maybe about to get a Blink Dagger. Like, he's in a really weak spot in terms of his item progression, Bottom and lane. the Axe could keep that shut down for a long time. Blink Tum yeah, Blink Play, Blade Mail being activated, not even Dunk coming out, because Afu, or sorry, Ajit also there. Didn't need to pop the DD, and I like the, the way that they're using this Kato, kind of a mobile beacon as he now calls him up top. Mm -hmm. And with this double damage, that is a tier 2, so despite yeah, the up. blinks...
being picked up on Fnatic. I just don't think they're able to keep up the tempo that Warrior Gaming is bringing to them. Yeah, very fast pace. They were very economical in the earlier parts of the game, getting free farm on Nana, getting massive stacks for Ajit, and now it's all paying off with a little bit of good farm, jungle farming from Kangaroo. They've got their initiation, they've got their damage, and Fnatic have to be scratching their heads at this point. They really don't have a great answer to any of this. It's got to be just an overwhelming RP from Mushi. Yeah, I think this is one of those games where he just said, dude, that escalated quite quickly. That Roche fight has just... The net worth of that fight individually wasn't that great of an exchange, but what transpired after, like, two tier twos, a couple of fights, you know, the Axe getting a blame on top of everything, and where is that Fnatic comeback? The tools are there, the, the Blink Dagger like you mentioned, but... I mean, let's say you get a 2-3-man RP, there's really not that much damage. You're looking at an Impale, a Wrath of Nature, maybe a Storm on top. I don't know, the kills are, are going to be hard to come by. Yeah, I mean, it really was a massive game changer, that Rush fight. I mean, started, it was just a 2,500 net worth for advantage for WG Unity, and it's only been like maybe three minutes since then, and we're seeing that we're skyrocketing 10K. towards 10k. Yep, that's going to be another kill. Uh, just getting all this set up, easy peasy, I mean, Ohio. He's trying to do the best he can to create space by pushing out the lanes, but it comes at a risk. And, well, he's been playing a really good profit game on the bottom lane. It, as a whole, it hasn't really had that big of an impact. So yep. now he gets picked off a couple times. He's not setting anything up for his team. And, and we're going to be seeing more and more advanced vision coming out from WG. I mean, they've already got one really good lane ward up top. Uh, interesting ward near the Roche pit. And that's going to scout Raven trying to make a move bottom. No, well, they're, they're ganking up a Bane. I mean, even if they get the Bane, it's just a Bane. It's more so... It's a dieback, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's something. All right, he just nightmare himself and walks it off. Well, maybe not. That's oh, no. right, But now the ports are coming in. This is looking bad. Bushi now goes in RP. Does only hit one. And now, on on two, and Ajit goes to work. That's going to be two kills on the two cores. Blinding light into the tower. Mana burning on Rave, uh, on AU. He's going to be dead right after this. This is going to be a full team wipe. Nope, just four. Right under the tier one tower. And that's your RP spent. I see Ajit and the rest of the team just draw a line to their Raxes. Yep, reverse polarity only connects on the Bane, who had already exhausted all of his cooldowns. Doesn't really isn't afraid to die whatsoever and uh, but it's got, a dieback though we, yeah it is it is a dieback but at the same time like you you see the best combo that jimmy can get demon goes for the kinetic static onto at least two for full duration and it doesn't matter at all like they're just in such a commanding position this game and fanatic the, their next rp has to be a game changer because right now they're about to get raxed Dyer's bottom tower well has fallen. maybe we could make some sort of skewer play it looks like they're going to kind of rest okay. on the laurels for now, maybe wait for the next Roshan. While Ursa definitely has the potential to take the first Rosh, we see that that got already stolen, and, and the TA might be in a good position to take the second. She has traps, advanced vision, she has a lot of negative armor, and I think they just have better jump and fight potential. Like, yes, there's a blink RP, but Axe practically has an RP on a 12, a 10 second cooldown. Like, he'll just be able to repeatedly blink and control the opposition. While they're attacking him, he's still doing even more damage thanks to that blade mill. Yeah, I, I think when uh, Axe first came to prominence, maybe a year or two ago, that's the comparison that was made to Axe. You know, he's like a, like a Magnus, except much lower cooldown. And once blade mill got buffed, you know, he's mm -hmm. definitely the go-to offlaner, uh, some would say. He's got another 2k in the bank. Is this where you go back for the Vanguard and make sure you don't die to the Ursa? Or are we looking for more mobility, like maybe a 4 staff? I think the, the Vanguard would be pretty solid. Uh, you need to definitely boost up your HP. The, the enemy is going to be trying to build up their effective HP, their life steal, maybe their armor, to okay. try to deal with this blade mail. And you just kind of win that arms race because you're already so far ahead. You're snowballing at kills. You're able to, you have more of the map to farm uh, thanks to all these great observer wards uh, placed out by the Radiant, and it just, yeah, I think you just continue to build that up and make it so that there's no way that they can out-tank you. I mean, there's also a possibility of a BKB. I mean, Fnatic does have a little bit of magic damage, but I think you're so far ahead that you don't really even need that magic immunity. You kind of just go in with the Vanguard and just watch them kill themselves. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, if the if the axe doesn't do it, the TA certainly will. She's right. able. She has the blink now, so she can follow up right beside him. Uh, add in some extra negative armor, so the blade mill's even doing more. It's it's pretty massive what WG is able to do 
in just a short time. Like, usually at this point of the game, if it was even, like, you'd be looking for, hopefully Afu can get, like, a full duration Fiend's Grip and not get canceled out, and hopefully you can find, like, a good call before the Ursa just tears somebody up. But right. this game is so lopsided, the Ursa is not a threat, and the Bane is just, like, icing on the cake if he's able to get some good spells out. I, I say the Bane is actually one of uh, the second most dangerous uh, hero on Warrior Gaming's mm -hmm. right now, because sure. next to the Axe, he could solo you know, set up pickoffs as a support, which is super valuable when you're, especially when th this far ahead. Oh, they're gonna play it somewhat slow, like you said, just gonna wait for the map controller to do their work. Although they're not really actively looking for pickoffs anymore. Mm -hmm. So I guess they are gonna be waiting for just a, a couple more items to come to their fold. They probably feel pretty confident, even without a battle fury, in their ability to just farm faster. Ursa is a kill uh, dependent hero. If he's not able to find kills, He's not able to really get much traction in the game. He does not farm nearly as fast as a TA or a Juggernaut, no matter what the item builds are. I mean, I guess like double Mjolnir might farm faster, but... He does have empower, but no, I hear you. It's not going to be enough to play the catch-up game, especially farming. And, we... and it's all under vision, so if they want to, they can just go ahead, smoke up, make a move, and I think that Fnatic are just going to be caught without any real response. Looking at Mushi, looks like he's gone for a mech. Uh -huh. This is, uh... I wonder if that's his normal build, as Mushi is known to go for... I mean, he, he likes his mid-mechs quite a bit. Sure. Um, but ever since the mana nerf on, on the item, it's... I'm not sure whether Magnus could fully support it. He does have the arcane boots, but still, you, you, you do tend to sh spam shockwave a bit. Yeah. You're not going to be getting a refresher anytime soon this game, and it used to be the big deal that Ma Magnus could get the blink arcane's refresher as quick as possible. You only need maybe a four staff to support the mana pool. Right. Going for this mechanism means like you're not going to have a refresher before like I don't know, 45 minutes, maybe. Oh, we're looking at a gank here for Juggernaut. Bananas seems to be quite aware of it. And now the rest of the uh, Warrior Gaming Unity is coming for a gank. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, Aljet is actually not going to be involved in this one. He's focused on pushing out the top lane. He's going to be farming that up. And that actually could set up maybe an opportunity for like the Nyx Assassin and the, the Nature Prophet to move against them. One strength of Fnatic's lineup is their ability to find pickoffs with these two heroes because the Nyx can stalk a prey and the, obviously the Nature Prophet can get there at any moment. So I feel like they do have a lot of good pickoff potential. The problem is the WG are just perfectly fine to move its five at this moment and I think that they're very soon going to be just pressuring the high ground in a way that Fnatic don't have an easy response. I mean I, I buy the pickoff if they were not so behind because these heroes are, are more or less dependent on the nuke damage and Adia is going to survive quite a while especially if her refractions are up. Fnatic though instead of looking for a random pick they're bringing the whole team. Fortunately again you know Fnatic just not getting lucky. Yeah, I mean, this is a really good call from Jimmy, like, making the smoke play, wrapping in, that the Nature Prophet, time and time again, has been called by the Axe and assassinated, so this time they try to give him some bodyguards, but in the end, it seems to be seen through by WG, and they're just going to keep on the front line here, almost killing off the Magnus, but he gets to blink away in time. Okay, tier 2 up top here, being slowly pushed by Fnatic. In fact, none of the heroes are showing, and they don't want to commit for hitting the tower. Oh, Afu in position, and keep in mind, any hero that he nightmares is almost guaranteed to die, so... Even as a support defending the tower, they, they can't really do too much to him. Even the fact is that even if he gets caught inside the like a Disruptor combo and an Ursa, he's got a Ghost Scepter. So while he'll take quite a bit of damage from the Disruptor, he should be able to survive. Okay, well... Now ports are coming in, you can see Afu's going forward. Kangaroo gonna get glimpsed back, that's one hero away, and hmm. with that, no more chase. Yeah, I almost feel like if you had more in your arsenal... Oh, they want to pick him! Oh, that would be really nice. The recall! Man, the place. Extremely good place. And they even <laughs> waste it. They think he's still there, and they are dead wrong. This kangaroo just kind of pulls a Houdini and, and zips out of existence thanks to the recall from the Keeper of the Light. I wonder if Ohio Sprout did not see him. Like, it was really close, right? It, it was, like, at the same time, essentially. So it's very possible, but maybe they saw him and they saw he jumped out further somehow. Maybe He doesn't have a four staff, but right. you never know. 
Maybe they click on him. It's like he, he has no TP because okay. obviously he just ported. Okay, oh, this would be really down. cruel if he goes and uh, buy, has a shadow amulet and shows that he has a shadow amulet, so they think that they he wasn't there, that he was there the whole time, and they just didn't have the right <laughs> location for detection. All right, Demon's gonna get caught here, and Demon dead. No big ults being spent. Not that he needed it. And now second Roche, and honestly, this is perhaps one more pick away from Braxis going down. Shadow Blade Axe, you never see this, like... Well, you're never so far ahead to afford this kind of, you know, next level luxury. Normally you'd be working back for a mech, or sorry, for a Vanguard, right? Mm -hmm. So interesting thing about the uh, Shadow Blade is that you can actually Berserkers call Shadow Blade and they'll just kind of follow you around with, without being able to hit you, assuming they don't have detection. Right. That being said, in immediate reply we're going to see AU pick up a Gemmatru site which will find itself onto Mushi's Magnus. A lot rests on Mushi's Magnus. If he gets picked off, the game is over. You lose your mag uh, for a team fight, RP for a team fight, as well as a gem back the other way. Like, there's no coming back from that. Yeah, he has to play so safe right now. Now this is where Warrior, Warrior Gaming Unity had a little bit of trouble uh, in their first opening game against Faceless. They were ahead, maybe not by this much, but they were definitely ahead. They took perhaps even one lane of melee racks. But they just can't finish the game. Um, I think if there's one weakness in, in WG's play, it's their inability to go for a very clean, pristine high ground play. Yeah, like you were mentioning before, they didn't really seem to want to press uh, their advantage. They were mostly focusing on farming up just one or two more items. Now they're about at that at critical mass where they do have the Manta Defusal on Jug in just a moment, and TA has her 10 second BKB. So I feel like after that Defusal's finished, there's really nothing more to wait for, oh, and they can just go for a kill. Oh my gosh, if they kill him, that is, it would just be the game. But as it is, they're going to continue to recall. They still have out the Aegis, they still want to use it. And we're going to have all eyes on Mushi for the potential high ground defense. Well, I mean, honestly, they could just send TA with Refraction up and just start hitting the tower a bit. There's really no real way to control Blink her. Skewer? Oh yeah, that's the... That's a still that's a thing. That's, yeah, yeah. that's a little, like, practically a fountain hook. That's so big in this situation, but... We'll see about that positioning. He's got Aegis and BKB, so I... You know, well, actually, it'd have to be kind of comboed up with like an Impale, because the Refraction would actually protect the Blink Dagger, and, and he would be able to blink away, away yep. out afterwards. So he'd have to be Impaled while Blink Skewered. Which I guess is... you could RP him, but you can't spend RP on an Aegis solo hero. So. No way. No, they gotta make up their mind soon, because Ajit is punching this tier 3, and because of the Deso, it's dropping fast. Are we gonna make a wrap around or anything? No, they're just conceding the Raxes. There's no no way they can really come back in this position if they lose this so early, and yet here it is that they're admitting that they don't really have an opening. They're not even smoking up the Magnus, he's just gonna go for it, and she blinks out anyways. Alright, well Ajit continues the siege. Tier 2 up top is taking a lot of damage, but uh, they're getting Raxes. Not really a fair trade here. Ajit gets the two clean racks. She'll be able to blink away. And they're not gonna. Okay, just never rest mind. With that. Yeah, let's go. Like, why would you? You can just go in for the two or three tower. You're gonna be in a really good position. And Ajit, I mean, he played amazingly in his last game. He was actually able to be a Drow Ranger with the, some of the strongest KDA I've ever seen on the hero at, at that timing. But here we have him just kind of being the unstoppable juggernaut up on the top lane. Of course, there's a jug behind him. That's kind of confusing, but. No, this guy is just large and in charge here. Okay, Blink Collins is going to find the most important player. Nice storm here protecting him. RP's going to get spent as well. Mushi needs to run. He will survive. Oh, no, Blink for Army Flash. Mushi is dead. Gem hits the deck. Actually, looks like the Jug does not pick it up. On the back line, Demon gets assassinated. Now AU being focused. The spikes are coming out. They are focusing on the Templar oh. Assassin. She's got the Asia, so she's going to be fine. Blinking forward is Nana again. Popping like feasibly on Ohio. How is going to pour home just fine? I say that though. Oh. Aja comes in with the assassination. And that's going to be a second lane of racks. I do believe that's honestly all the gas left in the tank. Yeah. Factor production kicked in for a moment there, but it looks like it's not going to be enough to. Oh, they're buying back. They're actually kind of repelling WG. We'll see their next move. They've got four heroes. They seem confident enough at least to poke down the melee racks. And now I think you walk away. Well, Blinding Light's going to push Ravens back. He's out of mana, but the Sprout actually brings the Juggernaut in. I'm somehow he got pushed back out. On the backside, a Jig kills the bear. Now goes for the supports. All right, this game, Fnatic is really trying to make something happen, but they are making a situation out of no situation. Because this is all Warrior Gaming Unity all the way. Ohio trying to pour it out. Nightmare cancels the port. Ohio's going to be dead. 
And we're entering fountain farming territory. GG's gonna get called in. <laughs> After that roach fight, there, there was no looking back. It really was. I mean, that was, like we said, the defining factor of the game. 2,500 to 10k net worth advantage going for WG Unity in the span of maybe four minutes. It was just a tremendous swing forward for them. Really well-timed initiation in the pit. Um, well executed in terms of their early farming patterns. So I've Juggernaut pretty much had a 